wanted to make a quick video about the 8-bit though SN30 Pro Plus controller and to show you guys if you're not using Linux yet uh, well, to know if this controller actually works properly across different uh, game launches, either it be Steam or it be outside of Steam when it comes to uh, Lutris, when you want to play games on like the Epic Games Launcher or Ubisoft Launcher or EA Launcher, does this controller work properly in all of the modes uh, and can you actually configure the controller also? Now, this 8-bit Doe controller has been out for almost five years now. Uh, I got it in like, I think 2021, uh, and it's a solid controller, I would say. Now, the first and obvious one is, does it actually work on links? Does it get detected? And can you actually use it, uh, at least use some of the functionality of just like being able to use a controller? Yes. You can use it on Linux and it does get detected when you do plug it into the PC or connect it through a wireless connection, which I also did get the uh, 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle that 8 Do uh, was selling that you can connect with the controller. So the question is, does this controller work with this uh, wireless dongle? Yes, it does. When you plug it in, you can easily pair it up the way you would normally pair it. And when it comes to uh, Bluetooth, you also can use it uh, and it will connect properly and show up properly in your Linux distro of whatever, whatever Linux distro that you are using. So the distro that I am running right now is Kashi OS. It is a Arch based distro. Uh, and when it comes to connecting devices on Bluetooth, it's pretty damn easy with the desktop environment that I'm using, which is KDE Plasma. So in Kennedy Plasma, all you have to do is you can do show hidden icons if you want to, and then click on Bluetooth, and then you can easily enable Bluetooth. And if we want, we can see that I've already uh, connected it before. We can actually go to configure Bluetooth, and this will open up in the Kennedy Plasma settings. And this is where if we do turn on the controller here, now, the only issue that I really have with the controller is sometimes, let's say if I have two distros installed, uh, if I pair this controller on, uh, let's say on this distro first of all, like it is right now, and then I go to the other distro and pair it, then I go back to this distro, what's going to happen is the controller is going to fail uh, to connect automatically, uh, where I'll have to uh, reconnect it uh, to actually get it connected on this distro. So if we do want to connect it manually, again, uh, we just do forget device like you would on other operating systems. You click pair device, and then it's going to bring up with a bunch of devices that you can connect, which as you can see right here is the controller itself, which KD Plasma is detecting as uh, a game controller. So we click next and it's going to connect to the device and it's connected just like that. Uh, and as you can see, you have the light is solid um, on it. Uh, you guys probably can't see it because uh, it's green. And that means because I have a green screen, you can't see the actual color, but it is connected. And another way of checking is if the controller is actually visible as uh, so we can go to the game controller. And as you can see, it's showing up as an Xbox uh, One S controller and it shows a bunch of different things. So we can move the um, show here on the camera. Uh, we can move it around. As you can see, it's picking up the analog sticks, uh, the button presses on the D-pad, and the other buttons here across. So, pretty awesome that it is all working correctly, and that's one way of just verifying if the controller is working. Now, to understand how this controller is able to work and connect and all that is all thanks to the XPad Linux kernel driver. This driver contains a bunch of different drivers uh, within XPad to get controllers working when it comes to being a Xbox controller. So when you put it in the X input mode, it is going to show up as some Xbox controller. This is different per controller, uh, like this one, uh, it shows up as an Xbox One S controller controller but uh, if you have a different controller that's third party or different 8-bit do controller it might show up as just an xbox one controller or maybe an older controller it might show up as an xbox 360 controller and if you're someone who doesn't own this controller and you're wondering if your controller is going to work on Linux, uh, you can also go to this link here, which I'll leave in the link description, uh, where you can select the different kernel versions and you can look through the entire list of controllers that are supported on Linux when it comes to the XPad driver. 
So if you don't know about kernel releases, you want to go to the latest, just latest kernel release, not the RC release. This is a release candidate. So that means that there is uh, experimental patches and stuff that need to go through testing before that kernel can release, which is 6.16 right now. But if we go to 6.15.4, and then we select the driver slash input uh, link here. And then if we scroll a little bit, we can find uh, this huge list of controllers that are supported in the XPad driver. So as you can, there's all types of different controllers here. There's the HyperX controllers, uh, not just controllers, there's also keyboards. So like uh, my uh, Wooting 60HE um, keyboard, this is also supported in the XPad driver because it can turn into a controller also. But as you can see, there's all types of things. Also, racing wheels are on this list. So when it comes to the Logitech uh, racing wheels, or I think the Mozart wheels also uh, might be in here. But like I said, there is a bunch of different controllers supported. So if you uh, want to know where to find controller support, uh, so then you can be actually 100% sure if you're buying a new controller or something, uh, this can guarantee uh, that support, I would say. Now, as it says here, you can see all the 8-bit Dove controllers, but it doesn't show uh, the SN30 Pro Plus controller, even though it shows up properly when it connects on a Linux system. It actually shows, hey, this is an 8-bit Dove SN30 Pro Plus controller. Uh, well, if you look at the list here, there is no SN30 Pro Plus actually supported. There's only, uh, as it says here, it only has the normal uh, SN30 Pro, which is that um, one without like the um, uh, grips and all that. So it's like really tiny or whatever. Uh, that's the only controller that's closest to, I guess, being supported. Now, one thing to understand is when you are pairing a controller on Linux or Windows, I'm pretty sure also, when you are playing games through Steam, it doesn't use uh, necessarily that XPad driver on Linux. What it's going to use is the SDL, uh, I guess you could say wrapper, which is what Steam Steam uses four different controllers to make controllers work more easily or if you want to switch like the um, controller support to a different controller like spoofing it to be a PlayStation controller or an Xbox controller or like a switch layout or something uh, you probably can um, do that stuff like you can say see it says you can use the Nintendo button layout if you want to uh, so that's one thing to understand is that when you um, also go outside of Steam uh, you may have this case where uh, your controller will work in Steam but it won't work outside of Steam when it comes to if you're playing a game through Lutris or something. But as you can see here, it does show up as an Xbox One uh, wireless controller and all the button um, inputs uh, do work properly. Now, one of the issues that you may face when using a controller, let's say uh, you've plugged it into Linux and it's not being detected properly as a controller, uh, and it's not on the XPad uh, driver list, it's most likely that you have to use the X1 driver, uh, which is another kernel driver that is trying to bring more support when it comes to different types of controllers. This is mostly to do with the Xbox One controllers. Uh, either it be they use uh, that Xbox wireless dongle thing. And my friend uh, had one of those dongles and he was trying to set it up on Linux and we did get it working properly uh, with the X1 driver. And usually it's pretty easy to install this. If you're on a distro like Nabara or you're on Arch, for example, uh, Nabara has it in their repos. Arch, you can get it from the AUR probably. Uh, and then when it comes to some other distros like Pico OS, they probably have it as well. And their driver manager uh, so when it comes to installing this it's pretty easy if you're on a particular distro uh, if not you may have to like compile this manually and do a git clone and all that which might be really uh, annoying uh, but most of the time this is pretty easy to install and then after you have it installed you can reboot your pc because it needs to build the driver onto the kernel and then after you reboot uh, your controller should be able to get picked up as an actual xbox one controller and then there is one more uh, driver that you can try out that lots of distros like to uh, include when it comes to like gaming distros. And this is the XPad Neo driver. Now the Neo driver, as it says here, is an Xbox wireless gamepad uh, Linux uh, kernel driver, but it's mostly to improve the wireless Bluetooth connection. Uh, so if you have Bluetooth issues with a certain controller, uh, it would be like an Xbox controller, I would look into installing this driver onto your Linux uh, system.
Now, one of the most annoying things about using a 8-bit Do controller is if you get it and it doesn't work, uh, and you want to try and update the freaking firmware for the controller itself, when it comes to the support of 8 Do on Linux nowadays, it's actually gotten worse. Uh, even though 8 Do's controller support is rather good on Linux, it's not because of really 8 Do making the controllers work on Linux, it's because of the Linux community bringing the support required for these to actually work. When before, uh, Inkbit don't used to actually provide the firmware packages really easily for uh, Linux users, and you could actually update the controller through the um, firmware updater on Linux. So it'd just be through like a basic system update, and you would get this update for the controller, and then that would be it. But then they decided that they uh, you would force the user to use their own firmware updater. And if you don't know, the Do firmware updater uh, only is is supported on Windows and I'm pretty sure Mac OS also. So no Linux support when it comes to actually updating the firmware of the controller. But uh, when it comes to, you know, if you don't want to go and have a Windows install or some dual boot or whatever, just to update the firmware uh, or go through like a VM and all that, uh, the only solution you really have is this blog post that I found quite a while ago uh, where you can basically uh, curl the uh, firmware package from the 8 website as that's the only way you can actually get the firmware. And then you need to figure out the number of your controller uh, to put into this link so then it grabs the right firmware and then uh, you need to get the uh, firmware updater, which is like pre-installed on like, I think every Linux distro. And you, what you have to do basically after that is install the uh, package firmware that you got from the curl. And then uh, it will, firmware updater will install it for you. So I would say this is pretty advanced and pretty annoying for someone who, you know, let's say, is coming from Windows to Linux. Uh, I think Apido should 100% make that firmware updater available or at least make like a CLI version so it's really easy or uh, make just the uh, firmware stuff uh, and just uh, make it easily available so then uh, the firmware updater can just update the controller and then there's no issues or hassles. Now for me, luckily, my controller uh, works perfectly fine on Linux. As I've said, it works both fine in Steam and outside of Steam. So I don't need to do a firmware updater at all because, oh, and also emulation. I have done a lot of emulation on Linux for the past couple of years and I've had no issues using it. So here's one example. We got the Mortal Kombat 1 uh, booted up right now. And as you can see, my controller uh, is easily uh, working. And we'll just pick a random character here. And as we can see here, I'm in a game, um, I'm the Scorpion, and everything seems to be working. Uh, which is what you want to see when it comes to playing a game, uh, under Steam at least. And just to show some more footage, we do have uh, one game that I have on the Epic Game Store through uh, the Lutris Wine Game Manager. If you don't know what that is, you're able to install different game launchers or really anything when it comes to uh, the gaming side of things. Or just regular Windows apps as well as you can run it through under Wine. Uh, we do have uh, Rotato opened right now, which is uh, one of these types of games I have never played. I just got it because it was free. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, my controller... Uh, is working properly and uh, as you can see yeah pretty cool we can turn the audio um unmute it and yeah as you can see it is working uh great honestly when it comes to latency and all that uh it is awesome and as you can see here of another example we are running the dolphin uh, emulator and we are playing the Legend of Zelda, the Wind Waker, and it is indeed working. After, of course, you set up the controller within the Dolphin settings uh, with the um, you know, button combination for the actual uh, GameCube controller stuff. Uh, yeah, it does work properly. There'll be jumping and, and all of that stuff. Pretty damn cool, I would say. And I would say that is the conclusion uh, of this video, is that one, the SN30 uh, Pro Plus controller does indeed work on Linux. If anyone owns this controller uh, or owns it with the um, 2.4 gigahertz wireless, uh, v, this is the version one dongle. If you own any of these, uh, they should work on Linux flawlessly when it comes to connecting, using the controller on either it be uh, Steam, outside of Steam, or through emulation. 
And of course, one thing that I do hope is that companies like 8 uh, start to provide more just general Linux support because one of the weirdest things is uh, 8 likes to say, oh, we support the Raspberry Pi with our controllers and we support the Steam Deck, which are both Linux based. So what they should be saying is uh, we just support Linux in general. Uh, when it comes to the firmware stuff, if they could port over either it be the firmware updater or the ultimate software uh because the ultimate software isn't supported on linux if you don't know uh when it comes to configuring the controller you can't really change that much like you can in the ultimate software when it comes to like when the uh, trigger gets activated or whatever you can't change those things uh so hopefully uh 8 Do starts taking maybe at some point linux a bit more seriously when it comes to the gaming side of things where you can actually use their software or their updater to update the firmware without having to have windows or mac os on another computer for example and if 8 is watching which i highly doubt it i would love to review newer controllers on linux because one of the main problems with uh linux gaming is reviewing hardware if hardware actually works on Linux uh, and if you can actually configure it and just use it properly on the operating system. One, uh, one of the things is when new 8 controllers usually come out, uh, they usually don't work on Linux and they take a couple of months for the community to usually uh, get it supported uh, and then of course then it works fine. But I would like to review the, those types of controllers uh, if there's any other gaming controllers uh, companies that may are watching this video for some reason uh, i would also like to review different types of controllers to see if they do work on linux so then people actually have an idea uh, if those controllers are going to work on linux so if you guys did enjoy this video definitely give it a like definitely subscribe to the channel i would really appreciate it and thank you to my supporters i'll show a text across the screen thank you give me money every single damn month uh and i'll see you guys in the next video peace